going to dive deep into psychology. Meet Ms. Mahfouza Shamradova. Graduated from Moscow State University. What, what was it like growing up in Bukhara? When to sit the university exam in secrecy without your parents' knowledge. In the psychology, we have fun rule. Uh, do no harm. Do you sometimes get like weird responses from kids? Disconnecting, let's mm -hmm. say, the children and parents. Mm -hmm. So it's our and phones, our tablets, mm. social media. Going back to the prevalence of ADHD, mm -hmm. it, does it have anything to do with social media, our phones? A guy shows up with a gun to this building, right? Mm -hmm. And and let's assume I fight back and tackle the guy and situation diffused, mm -hmm. right? But I'm traumatized. Three days, it's totally normal to have these symptoms mm -hmm. and reactions, right? And we always uh, have this attitude to hide, not to cry in front of kids. Even you lost someone, you're grieving, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you, you choose not to show to them your mm -hmm. feelings. Until my kids reach the age of, say, six or seven, I don't think they're going to need their dad around. I think never, never. Uh, be shame mm -hmm. uh, to go and see the professional to get professional help. Hey, folks! Hey, everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Adostria Muse. I'm your host, Muhammad Ali. Here today. We're going to dive deep into psychology and the guest I have on, I'm going to be talking to today on the podcast is, you know, from Tashkin and she works as a full-time psychologist and I, I'm so excited to be talking to her today. If you guys are interested, keep watching. All right. Without further ado, meet Ms. Mahfouza Shamradipa. Ms. Mahfouza, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. and share a pieces of knowledge that I have. Mm -hmm. I'm really so excited. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Would you like to tell our audience a little about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm a psychologist. I've uh, graduated from Moscow State University. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Tashkent branch mm -hmm. and uh, in 2014 mm -hmm. and since then um, yeah, I'm working as a psychologist at the clinic as a freelancer mm -hmm. psychologist and uh, as a school psychologist and uh, uh, in the international organization as well uh, so yeah <laughs> right and you actually grew up in Bukhara, right? You're from Bukhara. Yes. yes you want to talk right. about your past a little? <laughs> so what, what, what was it like growing up in Bukhara? It was okay. Uh, yeah. I went to the school number six mm -hmm. and uh, grow up. Uh, and then I, I just wanted to leave. Uh, the city uh, because of the I would say really um, tough uh, environment mm -hmm. uh, tough I mean uh, really constructive no mm -hmm. maybe so you had like tough parents no 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 not parents strict. but uh, but the neighbors mm -hmm. uh, maybe I don't know the whole uh, Sotsum is here so a bit Mm -hmm. At that time, maybe it changed now. Mm -hmm. um, not uh, to wear, not too short, to uh, to not to uh, go uh, somewhere else, be, 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 be without uh, the, mm -hmm. your brother, or uh, you should accompany with someone always. Like you know, not not to go somewhere uh, late. Uh, mm -hmm night and mm -hmm. uh, too many no's, too many restrictions, too many uh, boundaries, mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> so that's why I think uh, I wanted to just live a little bit, to live uh, alone mm -hmm. and uh, to find myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, I just decided and uh, while I was at the Lights you. Mm -hmm. 
they from the university they came advertising you know here is the university MCU if you want to apply and so on I just decided to apply and uh, nobody knew about this <laughs> that I was going to apply because I told uh, to uh, my relatives to everyone that I just wanted to if you remember the, at that time it was like uh, 1st of August so now it changed the uh, uh, so uh, and at that time uh, the private and non-state universities uh, you could apply before 1st of August mm-hmm. So that's why I just told them that I want to just a bit, uh, I don't know, relax before the uh, 1st of August. And uh, I just went to Tashkent and applied and uh, yeah. So So. you went to see the university exam, went to sit the university exam in secrecy without your parents' knowledge. (laughs) Wow. How old were you at the time? 17 17 yeah. and you had the guts to do it mm. guts you had you were bold enough to go to Tashkent on your I mean, own my my brothers were there as oh, well in oh, Tashkent they were already uh-huh. here uh, there uh-huh. um, yeah they were studying there mm-hmm. I just told to my parents that I just want to relax and uh, before the exams mm-hmm. and so on and mm-hmm. it just yeah right right so and what happened after that did you get in Yes, I get in Mm -hmm. and it was 22nd of June and it was my birthday. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and, uh, my father came to Tashkent and I told him, you know, it's my birthday. (laughs) And uh, by the way, (laughs) I, uh, yes, uh, I uh, entered to the university, Mm -hmm. this university, but uh, Mm -hmm. I get, uh, it wasn't a grant. So at that moment, uh, you could have buy a car. Uh, I mean, the, the amount of money, it was like the same mm-hmm. uh, for the fee of the university. Mm-hmm. Like it was, yeah. And uh, yeah, he, 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 he agreed. Uh, yeah, just, just started. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. So that's how you got into university. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. It, why did you, you, so you chose the uni, University of Moscow, Moscow State University in Tashkent. Mm-hmm. What, because it was promoted at school, at your school? Or was it the only uh, yes, reason why you wanted to get into state, Moscow State University? Yeah, uh, Because I didn't know other universities where I can... Uh, be a psychologist, mm-hmm. graduate and be a psych- mm-hmm. psychologist. And uh, there were a few, but uh, it was mostly state, uh, like uh, uh, Uzbek and etc. And mm-hmm. I wanted something you know, different mm-hmm. than that. Right. And I thought that uh, Soviet uh, uh, psychology was pretty good. So that's why I choose that. Uh, so I, I really wonder why you picked psychology of all the majors out there. Is that something you had been interested in since you were a child? Or is that something mm. that you got from a movie? Or is that something you read from a book? Or did you have any friends or relatives who pushed you in that direction? No, no. Actually, actually it was my decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, First, I wanted to, you know, uh, to deep, to know what's going on, what's the uh, feelings or thoughts that I have, mm-hmm. what, what does they mean, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, to know better myself. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yes, I choose uh, this field. Uh, psychology uh, to understand myself first Mm -hmm. and then yes it became more and more interesting for me to Mm -hmm. help support others as well right I see and what was it like studying psychology at Moscow State University Uh, it was Mm -hmm. uh, really uh, I mean (coughs) the exams were uh, not so Hard. 
but uh, to study there it was really tough mm -hmm. and uh, the lectures were from the Moscow from the uh, not from the branch but from the uh, like uh, mm -hmm. from the Moscow and uh, yeah uh, if we were at that moment 40 of us uh, in one group so uh, graduated from this 40 uh, around 27 i think oh what happened us. to the other 13 they, they students they just left they just couldn't uh, couldn't finish this because the Be workload was too heavy because it was strict yes it was strict it was uh, the deadlines was too short mm -hmm. you have to pass the exams and uh, if you don't you you lose you 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 have to go uh, back and mm -hmm. to study the again the mm -hmm. second grade and then again the third grade and etc wow yeah yeah. Do people still go to this university, Moscow State University? Yes, 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 yeah. it is. But uh, at that moment, it was five years. Mm -hmm. like, uh, and you become a master. Mm -hmm. And now they changed it. Uh, now they, they, they separated a uh, bachelor and then master. Like mm -hmm. four years and two years. So. Right. I yeah. see. And what social life was like in Moscow State University? Did you guys ever like have fun? Uh, Did you have parties? Did you yeah, have some yeah, kind yeah. of a students' union? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. had uh, we had a lot of fun together. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm guessing it wasn't probably all just you know studying and no, 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 taking lectures <laughs> no, no. and doing assignments. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh -huh. yeah, and what was it, what was it like living in Tashkent at the time? Did you live with with your brothers or you were living alone? I was uh, with my one brother and my grandmother with mm. there too. Uh, yeah, it was good and uh, mm, it was better, I would say. Mm -hmm. Better <laughs> than Bukhara, I'm guessing. Yes. In what sense? In what way was better than living in Bukhara? Uh, yeah, I don't know. There wasn't so a lot of restrictions, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nobody was telling you uh, what to wear, mm -hmm. what to eat, or what where to go or mm -hmm. not to go, uh, with whom to go, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, so you like you like that freedom, you like yes. that independence of yeah, not yeah. having to listen to anybody and yeah. doing whatever you wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that must have been cool. Yeah, right. And did you know English at the time? Like, when did you learn English? Oh, English, I. I really never had a teacher, proper teacher uh -huh. of English. And uh, I think at that time, no, my English was, uh, wasn't was good, I mm -hmm. would say, because uh, at the school it was like, I don't know, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the university we had, uh, I think we had uh, the first grade, uh, some hours, first semester, I think, we just studied English and that's it. And then uh, um, after the graduation and uh, after I started working in the kindergarten and then at the private school and so on, and <clears throat> I wasn't uh, this uh, Soviet time, let's say, psychology wasn't enough for me. And uh, when I was reading some books, articles, and etc. in Russian, you could see that it was translated version. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to go back and see the authors who wrote it, who, whose research was this. And uh, I just started reading it uh, when, I mean, or the original one. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think that's why um, at that moment I started, I think, uh, so learning I English. see. Mm -hmm. So you learned English with the intention of reading foreign literature on psychology, foreign yes. research papers. Mm. You weren't satisfied with the papers you got from mm. Russian universities mm -hmm. that were written in Russian, right? Yeah, that's right. right. And, and and what was the contrast like? What what difference did you see in r uh, Russian papers written on psychology and those written in English? I mean, Russian, uh, the, uh, the psychology there, it's pretty good, yes. Uh, but... Uh, 
in Europe or in America, for example, uh, it's uh, the, a lot of research that they are doing. Mm-hmm. It's not translated, and uh, the new knowledge that I mm-hmm. wanted to learn, mm-hmm. yes, uh, it's there. <laughs> <let's> <laughs> I <say>. see. <laughs> not in. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. now. It's not satisfied. Mm-hmm. I'm not satisfied from the Russian. Um, psychology, let's say, I see. they kind of stuck at the therapy mm-hmm. that they was uh, they were doing like mm-hmm. twenty years ago, maybe, and uh, the restrictions again, you know, they 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 how they teach, uh, how they uh, work with parents mm-hmm. as well. It's the same, mm-hmm. and. Uh, for, for from America, for example, uh, the way that they're now changing, it's more, yeah, more similar, more familiar. For example, I think uh, that uh, I wanted to do to implement, let's say here in I see. Pakistan. Right. Yeah. Why do you think Russians are less interested in psychology than Americans? No, they are. Is, is that because they don't believe in psychology? Because some people don't. Nah. Some people think that it's a voodoo science. It's not real science. Because nah. that anyone can become a psychologist. Mm. So no, they they are interested. I think they they believe and mm. they they they're doing something. But um, well, okay. Uh, when I said stuck. I meant this projective methodics that they are doing still, like uh, to diagnose children. Mm-hmm. They're still doing this, I think, and uh, it's not working. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these diagnostic tests, uh, our school psychologists, for example, they're using this uh, methodics still, mm-hmm. uh, but it's. The okay, this in the psychology we have fun rule, uh, do no harm, right? Mm-hmm. But these methodics are right now, I think they are a bit uh, being harmful mm-hmm. for the kids as well. When they ask, for example, you came, you do your methodics and the uh, diagnosis and etc., and the kids are curious as well, mm-hmm. uh, like also, at, um, not as well, sorry. Uh, usually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> no, don't, don't worry. It's, it's pretty clear what you're saying. I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and uh, when they ask, uh, so what's the result of these tests, right? And uh, you say, okay, here is the, they, they wrote here, if you draw big, st- uh, uh, big hands, for example, you're too aggressive. I don't mm-hmm. know. You didn't, you, you, you forgot to draw the ears and uh, mm-hmm. you are not listening to your parents. I don't mm-hmm. know. These kind of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they, they believe in it. The kids, oh. I mean, and, and it's really harmful. Mm-hmm. I think they, 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 they it, it has an impact on their self esteem and then the, um, uh, how they, um, I don't know, to the conversation with the others and so on. Yeah. Right. I see. So you're saying if a child draws a big hand when they're asked to draw an image of a human, that means the child is aggressive or it's, is likely to grow up to be aggressive? It's not me. Mm-hmm. This is the it's a Soviet time methodics. This uh, mm-hmm. this projective methodics that oh, they love to do. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and they 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 have this um, indicators. I think mm-hmm. I think yeah, and uh, and they find this uh, how, what this this means and etc. And uh, now it changed. For example, in America, they, they no, I mean, the literature, and uh, in in Europe as well, they say uh, don't use this projective methodics because they're they're not evidence based, and the only thing the the, the uh, evidence based is uh, this test. Maybe some of them, not all of them, of course, uh, and uh, just. 
be simple and uh, just conversation, simple mm-hmm. conversation with the kid. And uh, you can draw, of course, with the kid, but uh, use this drawing as a tool to know better, to 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 ask some questions from the kids mm-hmm. and to talk and about their feelings, about their thoughts, what they like. Yeah, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I see. All right, All right. So, what are the questions you usually ask children? Like you said, you ask them about what they're feeling, what their what their thoughts mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have? Do you sometimes get like weird responses from kids? What, yes. do, what do they usually say to those questions? Uh, usually, mm-hmm. unfortunately, they don't understand the, vo- the, the meaning of the word emotions. Mm-hmm. And they don't know what's, what's this. Mm-hmm. They usually ask, uh, uh, what kind of thoughts do you have? Mm-hmm. These kind of questions they say, what... What's thoughts, for mm-hmm. example? Right. And and, and then um, we have, uh, for example, the smiles. Mm-hmm. The the I don't know smiling face. Mm-hmm. Uh, when do you feel? Uh, if you remember, you can share the story, or event, or I don't know something. When did you feel like this? Mm-hmm. Or this smile, uh, which 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 can show that uh, you're like fear right Mm -hmm. and then uh, we just ask simply uh, when uh, did you feel like this way and uh, where did you feel in your body this Mm -hmm. Uh, and they show and they draw in Mm -hmm. in their body for example Mm -hmm. I don't know in the the stomach Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, when when I feel uh, something fear Mm -hmm. for example I feel like my stomach is uh, Mm -hmm. ache Mm -hmm. or my hands is Mm -hmm. hurt uh, or uh, I don't know my legs Mm -hmm. I want to run something like this yes Mm -hmm. and then we talk what we can do what helps them what 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 kind of support that they can get Mm -hmm. for example from, from their parents what do they like most of the time, um, like eighty percent of these kids, they say, uh, "I don't want anyone," uh, or maybe my sister or brother. They want, or they want just. Uh, um, it's according to age as well. It's different, uh, or they want just to spend time with their friends as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. They're not mentioning some of them. They can mention their parents, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, the statistics show that eighty uh, percent of the uh, like violence uh, comes from home, like from the parents, mm-hmm. from the I don't know. Yeah. This. Yeah, this is so sad. You think? I just, I just really wonder. Why parents not having these conversations with their kids? Yeah. So you said you said so this interaction that you have with children, you, where you ask them about their thoughts, their feelings. Simple questions, right? S- simple questions. So you think? Do you think the sort of interaction is rare at home? Like parents rarely talk to their kids about their feelings, what, what they are thinking or how they feel yeah. right so, and, and why do you think this is happening i i don't know the the exact answer mm-hmm. but i think um it's always like this it's uh, it's uh, our culture maybe i don't know it's a mentality uh, mm-hmm. so it has to do with our mentality yes maybe yeah and uh, everything is good, you know, everything is going fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day when a um, 15 years old boy uh, hang himself from, I don't know, I mean, that is suicide, and mm-hmm. etc. And they say everything was fine, but mm-hmm. it wasn't, right? Mm-hmm. So 
when the kids are showing the symptoms and reactions, it's always they, they're telling that something is going wrong in my environment, mm -hmm. that uh, I don't like it. And that's why I'm showing the symptoms, for example. And what are those symptoms? How uh, can you tell like a, a child uh, is about to, or a teenager is about to commit suicide? Yes, it could be tantrums. It could be uh, mm -hmm. nightmares, bedwetting, mm -hmm. or uh, biting their nails, or mm -hmm. it could be anything. Or like uh, anti aggressive uh, needs. Yeah, antisocial mm -hmm. behavior. Yes. Like all of a sudden they don't want to be friends with anyone. Yeah, they don't want to yeah. talk to their parents. Yeah. Isolation. Mm -hmm. Yes, everything. Everything is, and what you see is not uh, your kid's uh, behavior. It's mm -hmm. not uh, usual his behavior. It's mm -hmm. yeah, symptom and reaction. So, mm -hmm. and um, usually uh, they say no, everything is fine, and uh, he's going to school. He's studying well. He's um, uh, being quiet, and uh, but no, it's it's not enough. Uh, you should talk. You should. You should uh, simply really ask the questions. What's going on? Not about the marks at the school. You know, not about the the scores or uh, anything else. Just, just uh, what's interesting was today at the school. Uh, what was new mm -hmm. that you that you liked? Mm -hmm. That you uh, is there anything any event that you want to share with me? Just mm -hmm. like this. But uh, I think uh, another um, uh, thing uh, is uh, social media. I don't know gadgets, uh, phones, and etc. That uh, most of the time. Uh, the parents are in this, uh, uh, I think, and uh, there's no uh, bonding between mm -hmm. them and children, their mm -hmm. children, and uh, I think this is the mm -hmm. what's uh, um, missing. Yeah, what's missing? I see, but y you see, back in the day. I don't think parents had that bonding either, like back in the day, like long time ago, or you think in the past, parents were more interested in their children's lives and now they've become less interested or simply have opportunities to you know, get to speak to them. Is that, is that what's really happening or, because like I imagine like 100 or 200 years ago, par parents were out in the fields working and probably yeah. Yeah. Away, you know, from from home. But L life was not that different. Yeah. All right. But the kids were next to them, mm -hmm. uh, working as well. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The, I think uh, now, um, okay, the the gadgets and mm -hmm. etc. It's the the thing that is uh, disconnecting. Let's mm -hmm. say the children and parents. Mm -hmm. So it's our and phones, our tablets, mm. social media. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see, when you're in your phone mm -hmm. and the, the kids are, like, even the, the, the dinner time, right? Mm -hmm. You're sitting at the table and every time when someone calls mm -hmm. and the kids are talking to you, sharing with something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you say, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, give me just five seconds or one minute, right? And you answer your phone. Mm -hmm. And kids, what they feel, they're feeling. I mean, mm -hmm. they feel like, uh, okay, I'm not they, uh, they, they in the first, mm -hmm. or, um, uh, I don't know, place. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting attention. Mm -hmm. uh, like this phone is getting attention, mm -hmm. like, you know? <laughs> So uh, it's always like uh, I know that the, the job and uh, you have to work, you have to really provide your family and etc. But um, during, uh, I mean, you cannot live without these gadgets, right? Okay. But uh, what we can do, or what I can suggest, for example, is. Uh, uh, you can do uh, one day without gadgets at all. It's call uh, they call it now like um, uh, detox mm -hmm. from the gadgets. Yeah, 
like social okay. media detox. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like technology so, detox. Yes. <laughs> so they with no technology, no phones, no nothing at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be near near impossible. <laughs> I mean, I I don't honestly remember when was the last time I went a day without a phone or mm-hmm. without my laptop. Yeah, at this point we're just all technology addicts, social yes, media addicts. It's addiction. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we can just. It's not just about kids. It's it's also about parents. Yeah, just technology seems to be doing a doing big harm mm-hmm. to our interaction, to our bonding. And everything, right? What do you say? We talk about your work experience as well. You worked at different schools as a psychologist, right? Yeah. So, what does your what does your what does your practice really involve? So, what do you, what do you, what do you do in your practice aside from talking to children about what they're going through, what they're thinking, and what they're feeling? Because your CV here says you also help gifted children. Like, how do you, how do you how do you identify a child as gifted or what kind of help do they need? Mm. Is it there? <laughs> yeah, you, you do have that on your CV. So when you used oh, okay. to work at the school, Erka Toy Kitchen Toy, private establishment, uh, right? Yeah, okay, I know, I know. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, after the graduation, yes, I went to the private school to... Uh, kindergarten sorry mm-hmm. to work there as a psychologist and uh, while I was working with kids I realized that a lot of problems that mm-hmm. they have it's mostly from their parents mm-hmm. right so uh, then I started working with their parents as well <laughs> like uh, teaching them providing trainings conducting trainings mm-hmm. for their parents mm-hmm. uh, how to communicate how to play even how to uh, yeah uh, with their kids and uh, when there is uh, some uh, I don't know difficulties that mm-hmm. when they're facing some difficulties so we were talking uh, face to face individually and uh, yeah and so about the gifted now um, I have to change this word it's a bit stigmatizing I think mm-hmm. because uh, the gifted that uh, uh, we call this uh, syndrome, maybe autism, I don't know, maybe uh, down as a gifted. But 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 uh, now we're changing the formulation and uh, they're suggesting that to call it as this is as it is, like not gifted, not uh, not sunny, not uh, etc. Like uh, autistic child or like uh, uh, with Down syndrome child, mm-hmm. etc. So in the kindergarten... Ki- kindergarten oh, okay. Can I pause you here for a second? So you used to use the word gifted to describe children with autism and, 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 and Down, Down syndrome. Or with intellectual delay mm-hmm. or with... Um, yeah. Diff- but how can they be gifted? Because in English, the word gifted means talented. Mm. Um, I don't know. It was uh, because it's really confusing here because yeah. gifted is supposed to mean someone who is genius, someone who's born with talent, unique talent. They have innate ability to do something, innate ability to to do math or to mm. speak fluently or to play chess. Uh. That's that's what talented. That's what gifted is supposed to mean. But mm. I'm a little shocked here hearing you say. Gifted is the word you use in your practice to refer to kids with I mental conditions. I misunderstood then. It was yeah. maybe, yeah. It was gifted. Maybe it was about, <laughs> about yes, talented kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so talented kids, uh, I don't think that I had there, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, in the kindergarten. kindergarten. There were few, yes, really maybe... Um, smart ones but yeah not gifted i think Mm -hmm. yeah but but there were a few with uh, these syndromes Mm -hmm. uh, autism and the down syndrome as well Mm -hmm. and ones uh with um intellectual delay adhd Mm -hmm. yes 
Look, speaking of ADHD, well, I hear it's a common problem these yeah. days among teenagers, children, some adults. Like, so mm -hmm. why do you think it's happening? What is ADHD? Can you elaborate on that a little? Yeah, ADHD. It's um, uh, the first word I forgot. Hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. Attention, attention disorder. Yeah, yeah attention I, deficit hyper activity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's an acronym that stands for attention deficit hyper disorder. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. So uh, our neuropathologists they love this 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 uh, putting this uh, in in their diagnosis, mm -hmm. uh, but not uh, I would say every, every second or third uh, children has this. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, usually they misdiagnose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe it's uh, after the certain, uh, for example, in the kindergarten, okay, they, they, the whole day they are, I don't know, maybe it changed now. But at the private or even at the state kindergartens, um, uh, before it was a bit different. Uh, in the state, for example, they were always uh, all the day sitting uh, in their chairs and uh, not playing, etc. Right, and then when they come home, they agitated. Of course, they they play, they get their um, uh, family's attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the parents are asking from the doctors or other specialists, professionals, usually they get this answer: "Your kid uh, has uh, ADHD. Mm -hmm. That's it. You you cannot do anything about this." Mm -hmm. But. Uh, so, what is what's the diagnosis for ADHD? Like, how do you diagnose ADHD? What are the symptoms? And before we talk about, can you also talk about like what causes ADHD? Uh, I don't know to be honest what causes this, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that. Uh, have you ever practiced any child in your practice? Have you ever diagnosed any child in your practice with ADHD? The uh, psychologists don't diagnose this. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, diagnose put uh, usually neuropathologists are putting this kind of diagnosis, but mm -hmm. psychologists is working with this. But uh, I, I I had the several kids, yes, with this diagnosis, but they were all of them they were misdiagnosed. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, one of them, the, um, this kid, uh, he was traumatized. Uh, and the, the psych, uh, neuropathologist uh, told to the parents that he has ADHD mm -hmm. and so on. You, 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 you have to work medication and uh, a lot of uh, pills uh, and syrups and so on. I mean, a lot of stuff, yeah. but it, not, it's, it wasn't going away with the medication. So uh, we started working on that uh, with this kid. And then uh, I have a tool uh, which called Book About Me. Mm -hmm. So in this book, we were playing and uh, drawing and uh, sharing. And uh, the kid was sharing about his uh, memories good memories and then um, it's written like bad memories but it's not bad like uh, but uh, let's say uh, very not good memories okay so when he was sharing with these bad memories we opened this let's say a uh, box with a lot of um, traumas so after that after the processing all days these symptoms that he had, uh, it's gone uh, because it's related to trauma. So when uh, the traumatic event is happening, the 
part of the brain it's uh, switched off. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be here uh, at the moment. And then they uh, again misdiagnose this and they say he's hyperactive or he has attention uh, difficulties, right? So why it's happening? Because of this um, brain part is not working, functioning well uh, because of the trauma. Like, <laughs> you know, you have to go back and back and uh, mm -hmm. to, to see what's really going on. There. Yeah, I see. And so the prevalence of ADHD, going back to the prevalence of ADHD, mm -hmm. it, does it have anything to do with social media, our phones? Yeah, I think yes, of course, because uh, when uh, they lose the time, right? When mm -hmm. they are watching uh, YouTube or uh, playing some games on their phones, they 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 lost. Uh, uh, I mean, they're going uh, deep into this, and uh, it's called uh, dissociation. Mm -hmm. in our language so you're disconnected with this real world mm -hmm. and you're into the this uh, gadget world i don't know how to yeah so yes of course and uh, when and now there is a new uh, autism uh, they call it uh, digital digital digital, digital autism yes, yes. Yeah. digital autism uh -huh. yeah. And uh, they wasn't they, they, the kids were not born with this diagnosis, right? They get it after the, they, they, they was born. Uh, they, they get it uh, from these uh, gadgets, yes. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just I really wonder our, what the future is going to be like with, you know, when all these kids with ADHD grow up and... And they have to go into job. They have to go and get a job. They have to take care of their family. So, what's their lives gonna be like? Mm, uh, you always have to. I, I have a few friends. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, for example, the, the ADHD. I think they they have uh, levels as well. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a high level, of course, it would be really hard for you to function a daily life, mm -hmm. uh, to do the, to to go to work. I don't know to uh, study and etc. But uh, it, if your level is uh, not so high, for example, and you can regulate this, uh, you can. Uh, to do sport, you can go to swim, you can um, explore what's uh, your coping mechanism that you have, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I think it helps. Uh, you mm -hmm. can you can deal with this. Yeah. So you can like still you have said, a normal life with yes, ADHD yes. as yeah. long as you have some coping mechanism. Yeah. I actually think all of us have ADHD to some degree, to some yes, extent, I, like staying focused, yeah. paying attention. Right. Of course, it is, it's, it's no, it's not easy. Even if you're a normal person, normally functioning person, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes I'm listening to a podcast, I just all of a sudden zone out, <laughs> zone out, just stop, stop paying attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that? It's. It, I think it's only quite recently that people started calling this poor, you know, attention span ADHD, but. But it's just a natural human phenomenon mm. experience. I'm guessing, like it's yeah. it's not as as bad as people yeah. say it to be. Like I think it's blown out of proportion a little. The fact that because sometimes when I'm teaching a class and I, I'm explaining a concept to a student, right, or um, I'm, I'm teaching a lecture, right, and it's a pretty interesting lecture, but I see some students they're completely distracted. They're not present, right? Mm -hmm. And I ask them, hey, what are you thinking about? Uh, we got a lot of interesting things going on here, <laughs> right? Um, and I ask them, what, what's wrong? And they say, teacher, I, I just have ADHD. Uh -huh. I say, no, you don't. You don't really have ADHD. I don't know where they got that idea. I don't know who put that in their mind. It's just a scapegoat mm -hmm. excuse ki kids today use to yeah, yeah. make up for their 
uh, lack of interest in subject or make up for their, their, their laziness, simply. Yeah. Not, not, not uh, fully laziness, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, or as a teacher, am I being too strict? What do you think? <laughs> No, uh, I mean, I think uh, teachers, when, when you see that mm -hmm. they, they, the kids are distracted, for example, uh, you have to, I think, uh, to get their attention, you have to uh, answer, uh, ask the questions, for example, or I don't know, to play, if they're small, of course, mm -hmm. to play some games, mm -hmm. to, to get their attention once again, and then, mm -hmm. yeah, continue, right? Because for the kids, for, mm -hmm. for us, for adults, it's uh -huh. really hard sometimes uh, to sit in, in this really boring meetings, I don't know, boring, mm -hmm. uh, listen something, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, for the kids, it's, it's mm -hmm. even more difficult, I think. I, I know actually how to get students' attention. What I do is I tell them, I sing, I sing them a song. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I offer them to dance. Yeah. But I, I've never Good. done that, though. I mean, yeah, they usually go with the singing option. They want to hear me sing. <laughs> yeah, and then I sing Good. them a song, and they're all paying attention. Or I just tell them a cool story. Yeah. yeah, about the podcasts I have, people I talk to, or the things I've done in the past. Mm. So, yeah, 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 just sna snaps them back into, into the right headspace, into class. They start paying attention again, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. you also mentioned that you work, you work with kids with trauma, right? Yeah. So how do you go about, how do you approach children with trauma? Right. Yeah, so you said that when a child experiences some kind of a trauma, a part of their brain just shuts off. It stops working, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. And how do you reverse that? Mm -hmm. uh, for this, I have to explain how the brain works during oh, yeah, the sure, trauma. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> yeah, it might, maybe, I don't know. Okay, uh, let me start. So now uh, everything is... When they see, uh, for example, uh, everything is, uh, mm -hmm. they call, like, I had a, I, I, I've been traumatized or mm -hmm. uh, I had a, I don't know, a childhood trauma or something mm -hmm. like this, but. Which can be either physical or sometimes mental, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're but seeing someone get hit by a car. Yes, yes, right. yes. Yeah, or yeah. being abused at home mm -hmm, by mm -hmm. parents, which is also a form of physical trauma, right? Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, it, there should be a violence mm -hmm. uh, or violent event or when you see, uh, when you witness mm -hmm. uh, some kind of violent event or you were there or you heard by phone that your loved one mm -hmm. uh, in the car accident or etc. right? Or you saw... So it should be there, there, there should be a violence in this event. Mm -hmm. uh, so and violence, then, violence is an essential component of, a, of any trauma. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it could be a domestic violence mm. or war or, or a, a, I don't know, natural disaster mm -hmm. or uh, it could be as well. But what, what, if, what, if, what if the child just gets verbally bullied or bullied online? Would, yeah. Would, can, can you call that trauma? Uh, no, no, because mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, there is a difference between these two. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one we say trauma when uh, when there is a like threat to your life mm -hmm. or to the life of the your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Let's say when there is a, this component, so you can say that that this is the psychological trauma. Mm -hmm. So uh, when there is a bully, yes, it it hurts and it has an impact, and you can work with the psychologist, but we cannot tell that for sure it's trauma. Right? Uh, or there is a, another thing, or maybe not violence, but child neglect, but not just neglected, uh, like uh, when the parents uh, left him with uh, the grandparents and uh, left to work somewhere else and etc. But child neglect, it, it means like uh, the basic needs of the kid is not, they, they're not met. Like, um, like 
really basic needs, kind of uh, to eat, to sleep, I don't know, to 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 uh, attention, to get attention mm -hmm. from the parents. This kind of basic, basic needs are not met. So we can call it also like child trauma. Mm -hmm. So uh, when uh, there is an event, very violent event is happening, uh, so they, they, there is a three reactions that our brain shows, brain shows. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of reaction it mm -hmm. could be? What do you think? <laughs> uh, I'm guessing, so when you get traumatized, what happens is, I think your mind instantly locks it, it instantly locks up. It stops working when you're traumatized. You probably also get an instant hit of cortisol. I heard that when you're really yeah. pissed or when you're angry or when there's immediate threat to your well-being, yeah. you, you, get a, you get a release of cortisol in your brain, mm -hmm. which is associated with stress, anger, violence, aggression. Yeah. What, right? what's, what, what's the reactions that you can show at this mm -hmm. moment? For yeah. example, the, the, the guy came with his, mm -hmm. I don't know, gun mm -hmm. and threatening right now. I mean, my reaction <laughs> would be to <laughs> figure out a way to tackle that guy, to figure out a way to take that gun away, or to figure uh -huh. out to, a way to take everyone's safety yeah. as a responsible adult. That would be my reaction. Yeah. Right. So, so it means fight back, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. There is a three reactions, and uh -huh. one one of them is the fight back, mm -hmm. fight. So, fight, flight, freeze. Uh huh. And uh, or either you just freeze, you uh -huh. cannot do anything, mm -hmm. or you either you just run, mm -hmm. I don't know, or you fight back. Mm -hmm. right? So this is the three reactions that our brain shows, uh, and. Uh, uh, what's going on is, uh, so if we go to the neurobiological part of our brain, mm -hmm. so there is a three parts. Uh, the first part is uh, reptilian brain, mm -hmm. uh, which is responsible for only uh, like for the breathing, mm -hmm. for the heartbeat and etc. right? And the second part is emotional brain. Um, if I took example, for example, right, uh, I'm sitting here and I'm uh, uh, breathing and I'm not thinking about how I breathe or how, how, how my heart is beating, right? And uh, my emotional part of the brain, which is responsible for my, uh, uh, it's called limbic brain mm -hmm. as well. So I'm here sitting and uh, talking to you and enjoying this conversation, etc. This is the limbic part of the brain. And neocortex, the third part of the brain, uh, it's, uh, uh, this, par this part of the brain is called neocortex and it's responsible for the planning, for the, for the uh, so thinking part, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sitting and uh, thinking how much time I left mm -hmm. uh, not to be late for the birthday <laughs> <laughs> etc right yeah so and then uh, when some guys coming and threatening my life uh, so i don't have time to think right so this part of the brain is shut down so, mm -hmm. so I, I, I cannot think anymore mm -hmm. so neocortex is not working it's just limbic part and the and the reptilian part of the brain is working functioning and uh, so when I f have uh, fear for my life or for the life of the others, uh, so it's stuck in my emotional part of the brain. And uh, every time, even I'm uh, in the, the safe environment, after this event, I'm at home, right? Uh, I still can, uh, can, can have this... Um, reactions that I had and uh, during this event mm -hmm. when this guy, guy came uh, for example I showed the fight reaction right so I can show at home as well I can fight I can be aggressive toward others or I can be isolated always in fear always have uh, nightmares or flashbacks during the day and other symptoms as well. 
I kind of because it's stuck in my emotional part of the brain. Mm-hmm. I cannot think properly. Right. It, and let's go back to that scenario where a guy shows up with a gun to this building, right? Mm-hmm. And and let's assume I fight back and tackle the guy and situation diffused, mm-hmm. right? But I'm traumatized. Yes. And I, st- the next day, start having flashbacks, or I can't normally function at s- at school or when I'm teaching. Mm-hmm. So how do I go back to normal life? Mm-hmm. How do I do it? Yeah, good question. <laughs> for this, you have to process. Uh, mm-hmm. For for example, three days, uh, it's called uh, shock phase. Three days, it's totally normal to have these symptoms mm-hmm. and reactions, right? After three days, during the um, like one month. If you have these symptoms and reactions, it's called acute stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, gradually, if you feel safe uh, with your loved ones and environment is really good, positive and supporting you and etc., you can deal with this eventually without uh, the, the, the need of the professional need, right? Mm-hmm. And if... Uh, these symptoms and reactions going on and uh, and uh, you cannot deal with this and uh, it it has an impact for your in your daily life and you cannot work you cannot function very well as you, you did usually uh, so you have to uh, and uh, and it takes uh, six months and further for example, after six months of after the event, you have the symptoms and reactions, and you have to work with uh, with a psychologist mm-hmm. or psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, there is a a lot of uh, different studies, a lot of uh, therapeutic ways uh, to work to uh, process this trauma. Uh, for example, it's CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, Q sensory therapy, or trauma trauma related therapy, EMDR, mm-hmm. uh, eye movement uh, therapy, for example. Do those therapies actually help? Do they actually work? Yes, of course. Yes. Right. Uh, the the for example, narrative exposure therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, when uh, when. Uh, the psychologist, uh, for example, uh, puts you in this uh, again in this event like exposure, right? Yeah, you have to feel what what you were feeling at that moment, mm-hmm. and uh, then you have to, for example, imagine that some uh, guy or older you, for example, if uh, it's related to child trauma. Uh, you remembered something that some uh, some 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 guy or someone uh, there were some violent event, for example, in your childhood, and you know about this and you remembered this, and uh, you they 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 psychologists or therapists they put you in this moment. And uh, you imagine exact that moment that you had this trauma, uh, but you are an adult right now, right? Mm-hmm. So you come uh, and kind of save yourself uh, when you were a kid, mm-hmm. and you older you coming and saving this kid mm-hmm. from there. So kind of yeah. I, I get the idea. Magic. I get the picture. I remember watching a TV show called Suits. I'm not sure if it's about lawyers, American lawyers, ah, yeah, suits. Yeah, suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's this character called Lewis. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's a lawyer. Uh-huh, he's into, uh-huh. and then he, the guy is traumatized when he was a kid, and mm-hmm. he starts going. He starts seeing a, a psychologist, mm-hmm. a therapist, and one of the in one of the episodes, mm-hmm. I remember the psychologist using this exact method to put send him back. Yeah. To, to his past and saving his save his younger self from a locker room yeah. at school. Yeah, 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 I just remembered that scene yeah. while you were describing <laughs> that method. Yeah. Right. The other thing I really wonder is, is it really possible to train your mind or your body to never experience trauma? Is it possible to reach that mental state? What do you think? Theoretically. <laughs> I think I think it is. I just wonder if there is any scientific evidence to back it up, mm-hmm. right? 
because I've, I've seen a lot of people and they are, they are unshakable. Mm -hmm. They have unshakable personality. They, sh they have unshakable character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're never stressed. They're never in shock mm -hmm. and they know how to stay calm, cool mm -hmm. in high stress situations or when there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to train yourself to reach that level? Mm. So, uh, if I understood correctly, mm -hmm. you mean that is it possible, for example, uh, not uh, to be traumatized mm -hmm. if some uh, event is happening, right? Or is it possible to train your mind mm -hmm. and your body mm -hmm. to be trauma resistant, mm -hmm. to be trauma proof? Mm -hmm. Like our phones are waterproof. Mm -hmm. Can you make yourself a trauma proof, <laughs> but, uh, you know, creature? Yeah, I mean, maybe it's possible. Maybe there is uh, some exercises to do, mm -hmm. or, but mm -hmm. you have to have resources, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have a uh, background, mm -hmm. safe background, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to have r really good, uh, let's say, uh, protective mm -hmm. factors, mm -hmm. which we call... It could be the family, it could be really f good friends uh, or coping mechanisms mm -hmm. or uh, I don't know, some interests that mm -hmm. you have. Like your, your mind uh, or soul or psychological condition, mm -hmm. right? It should be so, so kind of uh, trained, let's say, to protect your mind. Uh, you have to know what helps to you, like uh, and uh, practice like mindfulness mm -hmm. or breathing exercises mm -hmm. or meditation. What helps mm -hmm. you? And uh, when there is a something, some event is going on, uh, and you have to think. You, you don't have to think about it. Like okay, uh, what kind of uh, exercise I should do now? Right? You you have. You have no time to do to to think. Uh, okay, I should breathe or meditate or <laughs> something else, right? So uh, it comes naturally, uh, automatically, I would say, and uh, it protects you, right? Yeah. So um, if uh, we can talk about the statistics, for example, I don't have exact numbers, but I know that uh, during the one event when there are a lot of people, mm -hmm. for example, in the bank, I don't know, somewhere else, some guy came, right, with the, with the gun again, right? But not everyone was traumatized, right? So not everyone was... Uh, some of them were witnessing or some of them were in the incident, but they were not traumatized at all mm -hmm. or the symptoms and reactions, they just gone mm -hmm. after three days, mm -hmm. it, which means that, 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 that they, they, they were in pretty good environment maybe and the biological, physiological and psychological conditions were like healthy, let's mm -hmm. say. Yeah. I, I know it's going to sound weird, but... Can trauma be good? For, for, for the future, you mean? Yeah, the, yeah um, I know the question sounds weird, but the trauma itself, like, can possibly be good, experiencing trauma? Mm. Because what I'm thinking is one of the ways you can make yourself trauma-proof is by experiencing a lot of trauma. I have heard, uh, you know, uh, a lot of um, discussions mm -hmm. uh, uh, around this topic mm -hmm. and uh, people think really uh, that trauma help their kids or their husband, I don't mm -hmm. know, or wife, uh, it motivate them to become a better person or mm -hmm. to become, uh, I don't know, successful person mm -hmm. and uh, so on. Mm -hmm. but, but when you talk with the person who had have been has been traumatized. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it took a lot for him to become at this level, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, a lot of therapy, a lot of uh, I don't know. Um, he has been hurt, right? Uh, and uh, when you have childhood trauma, 
for example, uh, and sometimes, most of the times, let's say from the uh, loud ones, you get hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And for the future, you don't have uh, any, um, I don't know, trust to the world, mm -hmm. to the others. You lose this, right? Mm -hmm. So you cannot trust anyone. It's really hard for for the mm -hmm. person, for for himself. I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But you can't really imagine a world without any trauma either, right? Yeah. Trauma is. I feel like it's a necessary element, part of upbringing. Like if you look at those kids who's never experienced a trauma in their childhood, they tend to be weak and soft. You right? think? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I talked to, so in my teaching practice, I've taught a lot of students, thousands of students, right? And I, and I see those kids who come from tough backgrounds and they're actually more prepared. They're more conditioned to deal with challenges or high intensity situations compared to, compared to those people, those other students I teach who come from you know, well-off families and they didn't have any hardships growing up or they didn't have any sort of difficulties, mm -hmm. right? And they tend to be, tend, they, they, they are less reluctant to take on challenges. They're less reluctant to do something hard, difficult. Mm -hmm. And they have the soft character, mm -hmm. too soft. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, don't you think trauma is necessary part mm -hmm. of childhood? It's a uh, necessary part of growing up. You see, we cannot say that this soft and tender or like, mm -hmm. uh, how do you call it? The attitude, I mean, uh -huh. the, the second example of mm -hmm. you, they didn't uh, get traumatized. We cannot say that mm -hmm. because the trauma reactions, they could be really different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe they were traumatized and that's why they're really quiet mm -hmm. really uh, they don't care mm -hmm. they 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 just uh, most of the time they might be depressed mm -hmm. or other symptoms and reactions right mm -hmm. they plenty of them mm -hmm. so you never know what what reactions could be uh, could, could be showed by a traumatized person mm -hmm. so uh, no mm -hmm. i think it's not yeah It's not good <laughs> to, to be traumatized. Did you experience any trauma growing up? I d don't remember because uh, maybe, I don't know, because it, it, it could be shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, so you cannot remember this. And you, you have to recall these mm -hmm. memories if you want to process this. No, but, uh, but me, no. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you don't have any childhood trauma that... Uh, hinders your life any or or one that sticks out no i think N any no. no significant childhood trauma no. right or maybe you did have a lot of trauma in the past and you learned how to deal with it cope with it maybe maybe yeah. maybe yeah <laughs> yeah i, I mean uh, i still i still uh, mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. let's say on myself first mm -hmm. of all i i I mean, um, when I see some articles, when I uh, see some uh, symptoms, or maybe uh, I I was reading the other day about attachment theory, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a different styles of attachment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, secure attachment, anxiety attachment, or uh, it could be um, uh, avoidance attachment. So I was uh, wondering what kind of, which one of them is my style, mm -hmm. like, you know. And uh, there are different ways. Uh, and uh, every time when I have, uh, for example, tests or uh, methodics, or for example, to give for someone, I do it myself before mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then giving them to oh. the other person. Mm -hmm. So, which one of those three categories do you fall into? Uh, I think uh, it's in the middle between anxiety and uh, avoidance attachment. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> But definitely those, not secure. Huh? What are those things? What uh, do they mean? Uh, uh, 
Mm, okay, anxiety attachment. Mm-hmm. If you had uh, in your childhood uh, with your parents, uh, for example, um, what they show, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the kids who has anxiety attachment, they show like uh, to get the attention. They they show off. They always uh, shout or tantrums or screams or crying or etc. To get the the, the parents' attachment. And uh, in the other example, uh, avoidance attachment, they're usually they're quiet, they do everything that uh, they were asked, mm-hmm. and uh, just, just uh, for example, not uh, to leave them. Uh, nobody uh, cares or nobody... They, they don't want... Uh, to somebody, for example, from the family to, um, uh, I don't know, to scold them, to argue, to, to yell at them. And that's why they just uh, peacefully and quietly doing everything that they, mm-hmm. were, that they were asking. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So, and secure attachment is that, the, the, and, and uh, by the way, I forgot to mention about the, when there is exi- anxiety attachment, <coughs> They usually cry when uh, the parents are leaving. For even they uh, they are living at the another room mm-hmm. uh, for two minutes. The kids are not uh, starting, for example, crying and uh, etc. And when there is a secure attachment, uh, I mean there is a bonding, there is an interaction with kid, there is a they they, they play with the, with the, their parents and they don't have to there is a trust between them uh, there is no violence there is no yelling there is no shouting in the family and you know the really secure attachment mm-hmm. so you said you have anxiety and between t- these two yeah, yeah. anxiety because and the other the uh, other one was uh, avoidance avoidance attachment, yeah some right? of the the uh, it has really uh, big impact in your future mm-hmm. in adolescence life mm-hmm. uh, you can show these attachment styles when you are with your i don't know partner or in your workplace with your supervisor on etc right mm-hmm. so but you can work on this and uh, the the first thing if uh, oh, first step let's say to help to yourself or mm-hmm. to the others it's rec- recognition mm-hmm. if you know that uh, that uh, that what is behind this uh, mm-hmm. my attitude what's uh, behind this my thought uh, and you work on this mm-hmm. uh, so you can change it mm-hmm. I see. so you need to recognize the problem first yeah. Right before you try to solve it. Yeah. So why am I feeling that way, or why am I thinking that? Yeah, self-analyzing. Yeah, and self-awareness. Yes. You need a little bit of self-awareness. Mm. And at what age do children start showing the signs of self-awareness? Uh, I think it, for this, you have to have again. Mm-hmm. Again, parents, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, they can show you, they can uh, talk to you, and uh, yeah, uh, it's like uh, uh, from the childhood, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from uh, four or five mm-hmm. age, uh, mm-hmm. if your parents is talking mm-hmm. to you and sharing, okay, I felt this. When you s- told me to do this, for example, mm-hmm. you, if you told me I don't love mm-hmm. you, uh, you meant maybe you were angry, you were feeling, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, this kind of, th- th- this way, for example, you were feeling, I understand you, but uh, I really love you, I, I, I really uh, care about you, like this kind of talkings, you know. And uh, for us, I don't know the the feelings are at the at the, I don't know at the bottom of the mm-hmm. list to talk about mm-hmm. the topics, you know, and uh, they're not. Uh, uh, if you talk about the feelings, it's like you're vulnerable, uh, or you you you're I don't know. 
Yeah. You just don't talk about the feelings, your your feelings mm-hmm. as a parent with your kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, we always uh, have this attitude to hide, not to cry in front of kids. Even you lost someone, you're grieving, right? Mm-hmm. But you, you, you choose not to show to them your mm-hmm. feelings. And you're grieving alone and the kids are grieving alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they see uh, that, that they, they think about themselves. Am I going crazy why, why do i feel this way mm-hmm. and they don't understand obviously mm-hmm. and you have to you have to show this you have to explain okay listen uh without this uh, i don't know person that we lost and we will continue loving or continue um, grieving uh, and it's normal the, the way that you say that this is normal that you are feeling it's also good for them mm. to know that they are not going crazy mm-hmm. basically yeah yeah i see every time is uh, like really simple just talking having conversation mm-hmm. and sharing about mm-hmm. your thoughts and feelings mm-hmm. and it, do you think that's what makes a person a good a counselor that that's what makes a person a good uh, therapy counselor because your CV says you have a lot of therapy sessions too mm-hmm. so what makes a person a good counselor is it their ability to listen and talk to people mm. do you really need university qualification diploma to be a good counselor yeah I think yes you really need because they teach a lot of stuff of mm-hmm. course uh, in our state university, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there may be a lot of boring stuff like mm-hmm. projective methodics and etc. But, mm-hmm. but uh, they, they, I think they uh, teach you the basic of the basics counseling skills mm-hmm. that you should have. Uh, skills like empathy, like uh, non-judgmental listening, uh, mm-hmm. like, uh, for example, um, do no harm, uh, like validating and normalizing mm-hmm. their emotions. Mm-hmm. This We call all these um, uh, skills uh, as a therapeutic alliance. Mm-hmm. So you have to build this therapeutic alliance with your client not client they call it like service user right now Mm -hmm. which i don't like Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah you have to build this therapeutic alliance with Mm -hmm. them i see so you you have to sort of know the learn the terminology Mm -hmm. be able to name different conditions Mm -hmm. and understand their the causes and the effects yeah right, and you get that knowledge at university yeah and this knowledge uh of course when you get from the university you have to in simple ways you have to explain mm-hmm. right and we call it psychoeducation mm-hmm. you have to explain when you go to the doctor for example and they just give you a prescription and they just say you just take this right mm-hmm. do you have any i don't know trust to this doctor i don't think so because if they explain to you what is this medication for what and uh, how to take it how it uh, can um, help you and then you have a trust to this doctor right Mm -hmm. and then the healing process might be the treatment process may be uh, more um, quicker yes quicker yeah i see right and that's what you're getting taught at university because yeah. I'd like to think of myself as a bit of a, a psychologist as well, as, as, since I've been, you know, teaching for almost seven years now, and I've learned quite a bit about human psyche and how it works, what motivates people, what drives people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And I actually have therapy sessions here with our students sometimes, or the teachers when they have a problem. Uh-huh. And my therapy sessions are actually pretty, you know, straightforward simple we just sit down and talk they tell me what they're experiencing right and what they're going through Mm -hmm. and then i tell them that i've had similar experience in the past and that it's okay that the thing that's happening to them is normal and it's just gonna you know go away just have to wait it out and uh, 
And a lot of what I do in these therapy sessions is just sit and listen to them. Yeah. And sometimes I think that's what people need. Mm -hmm. Just they don't have someone who listens to them. At home, their parents are busy on their phone, away. <laughs> their friends yeah. worried about their exam or yeah. their boyfriend or girlfriend uh, or people. It, it, it seems as though we don't have anyone who we can talk to. Mm -hmm. So, and in that sense, my definition of a good counselor is someone who just listens to you genuinely, right? Without judgment, mm, without yeah. um, actively just listening, mm. right? And uh, to showing empathy, mm -hmm. just, uh, yes, I understand you. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I see what you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just simple. But mm -hmm. uh, but when you talk about the problems, they wait for the quick mm -hmm. results, for the quick decision, for the quick, uh, I mm -hmm. don't know, um, yeah to 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 have some uh, some uh, something that can work some magic i don't mm -hmm. know <laughs> and and we try it during these um, sessions mm -hmm. we try to explain them mm -hmm. no it doesn't work like this you have to have uh, uh, understanding that or what you're dealing with mm -hmm. and what's exactly the problem mm -hmm. and go deeper and mm -hmm. explore this and uh, and what what might help you to deal with this to heal mm -hmm. you know so and then when we're starting working what kind of uh, coping let's say that might help them and uh, we give them tools for themselves to use and, uh, and so on mm -hmm. All right yeah, psychology is pretty uh, fascinating. It's really interesting, right? One of the things you mentioned earlier on podcast was the word soul. I didn't really expect you would say the word soul because I think psychology does not believe in the existence of soul, or does it? Uh, does, does science or psychology believe in the existence of soul? Uh, no, uh, psychology is a science. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we uh, the brain process, what's going on, and mm -hmm. etc. Yes, it's more in this field. Mm -hmm. But uh, I forgot when I was mentioning this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this word. When so. we're talking about children uh -huh. and their reaction to certain things, I don't exactly remember, but I was a little surprised when you used the word soul. Mm. So, is there a, any chapter or emphasis on mm. what soul is in mm. your psychology textbook, or a, have you ever used it in your own practice? Do you believe mm. in the existence mm. of soul? No, 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 yeah. no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't practice this. Mm -hmm. No, mm -mm. no. I, I mean, maybe I, it's my poor English. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I see. But uh, yes, we don't use this. Yeah. Right. Right, right. Uh, what do you say we talk a little about uh, things you do outside your work and your, you know, studies? Do you have any hobbies? What do you, what do you see, what do you find yourself doing when you're not going to work or taking care of your kids? Right? Do you have any you know, leisure pursuits, hobbies that you enjoy? Hobbies. Uh... I really like swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, it's relaxing mm -hmm. for me, and uh, yeah, sport usually and uh, spending time. I think with with kids and mm -hmm. without gadgets. Mm -hmm. And we have one day, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not 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 all day, uh -huh. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just. Uh, couple of hours mm -hmm. without gadgets mm -hmm. and it's kind of a rule mm -hmm. but whatever uh, uh, it doesn't matter who is coming mm -hmm. uh, he have to or she or he have to put the phone away mm -hmm. and then come in and mm -hmm. then uh, we starting yes um, playing I don't know reading or I don't know talking to each other, sharing mm -hmm. what was uh, interesting during this week and, mm -hmm. yeah, the plans, mm -hmm. future, mm -hmm. etc. Right, right. And how long have you been doing this for? Is it something you 
new, uh, really new. Uh, actually, when the um, summer holidays uh, started, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, then we started doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, every Saturday, uh, the evening, just mm-hmm. two hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how do your kids feel about that? Do they like the, it? Uh, uh, do they like it? Do yeah. They- uh, at the beginning, it was uh, it was hard. Like uh, just two weeks, I think it was hard. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, it's like it was a just rule. You know, mm-hmm. you cannot. You you have to exp- uh, mm-hmm. accept this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So they're used to it now. They're accustomed yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like they're it. They're used to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that mm-hmm. before, for example, when uh, we say uh, you have 30 minutes to watch, to do, I don't know, to play, whatever you want on your phones, and they were just arguing and then saying, no, I want more and so on. But now they know that, that it's the rule mm-hmm. and uh, you have to put clear boundaries. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they, now they're listening to this. And how did their behavior change after that? Um, did, you, did, you sign, did you notice any you know, signs of change in their behavior? Yeah. Uh, before, for example, when you take the phone away they were shouting they were screaming for mm-hmm. example and etc the, the younger one not the oldest mm-hmm. one so they have some kind of withdrawal symptom withdrawal. yes yes of course yeah and now now they just i'm done uh-huh. you, you can take it mm-hmm. like, uh-huh. <laughs> you know <laughs> they're understanding more and more mm-hmm. uh, that there is a, a lot of interesting stuff without mm-hmm. gadgets mm-hmm. as well. Or, or maybe because maybe maybe they just think there's no point fighting because they're gonna lose anyway. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Another hobby mm-hmm. is uh, yeah, mm-hmm. watching. It's like I know contradictive yes but i like watching the movie series mm-hmm. uh, in english mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, reading books as well mm-hmm. um when i have time <laughs> yeah. yeah and listening podcasts mm-hmm. um yeah too much i'm guessing as a mom and someone with a job you barely get any time on your hands for leisure yeah. for entertainment yeah yeah, right? yeah. but it, it, just in the at the evenings, mm-hmm. yeah. Right, the evening time. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I read another day about uh, revenge bedtime procrastination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they What's call that? It, it's uh, when moms, for example, during the day, then they don't have time for themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they have to uh, go uh, to sleep, right? Uh, to have enough energy for the uh, next mm-hmm. day but uh, from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a time really silence really quiet and there is no expectations from the others and and and, and there is that th- this time for example for them uh, is the time for themselves. Mm-hmm. So they call it now revenge bedtime procrastination. Uh-huh. Like you procrastinate with your bedtime, uh-huh. but it's revenge uh-huh. <laughs> for, the, for the time uh, that you spend during the day, mm-hmm. f- not for yourself, kind of. Uh, I wonder if there is one for dads as well, <laughs> or is it just for moms? <laughs> Hey, I don't know. Because I think there's, I think we need one for dads as well, okay? Because yeah. dads not getting enough sleep either. Yeah. They go to work, they talk to people, they drive around. That's a lot of stress. Yeah. Right. But uh, for example, when the kids, your kids, mm-hmm. uh, want something, they go to you or mm-hmm. to your mother, to 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 their mother. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, to ask something, they approach to you or to uh, to well, their mother. I'm, I'm single. I'm not married. I, oh, don't, sorry. Have, <laughs> I don't have kids. <laughs> I do have kids, though, here. I have a lot of students. They're all my kids. I love them all. I'm sorry. Yeah, and it's okay. It's okay. So they no, but us- I mean, they, they for example. They usually yeah. come to me. They yeah. usually come. Students here, though, uh, there's another guy who runs this school, my friend Alicia. I'm uh-huh. not sure if you know him. And yeah. he, so if there's ever a problem, 
Yeah. Students usually come to me because they think I'm more approachable. Uh, yeah, I'm more agreeable. I listen to them. I sit uh-huh. down. I try to help them. Yeah, yeah I'm more caring and kind. Mm. And uh, Alicia, the other guy, is more like a dad figure. Is strict. <laughs> yeah, and is always angry because the guy is always busy. He doesn't have time for sitting down and you know, listening yeah, to you talk. So or, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why it's mostly yeah. for for moms. But with my own kids, though, I don't think I'm gonna have much time because I'm more of a work guy. I don't think if, if even if I you know get married, have my own kids, I'm not gonna be making much time for my own family. I'll be away f- most of the day, yeah, most of the week, yeah. Yeah. I I I, I can I know it. I feel it, and I I'm sort of preparing myself for that. I'm not one of those like homestay dad. I'm not gonna be one of those homestay dads and taking care of kids until until my kids reach the age of say six or seven. I don't think they're gonna need their dad around. <gasps> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I just I just think they need a dad once they grow ten, twelve, fifteen, and they need someone stricter and tougher. And until then, they should be good with their moms. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe my mind. Well, I'll change my mind once I have my own kids. Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope you will change yeah. your mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, my kids grow up having a lot of trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked a lot about trauma, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but <clears throat> the research again mm-hmm. it shows that the, the, when dads are around the mm-hmm. kids, it's more they feel safe, mm-hmm. and when you still feel safe, mm-hmm. for example, uh, your future is. Mm-hmm. brighter and mm-hmm. good you know for mm-hmm. for for you for for I mean, psychological health that also depends on the dad's personality yeah if, of you, if your dad is aggressive then you don't yeah. want him around yeah, you're yeah, actually yeah, happy when he's away yeah right if your dad is alcoholic course, abusive yes. then yeah. Mm. yeah right right yeah anyway mm. so we talked a lot about psychology and your interests today and we're about to wrap up the podcast. And before we do it, do it I want to ask you three more questions. In this part, we talk a little philosophy. So uh, would you like to tell us a little about your personal philosophy? What, what's the thing that guides you? So what do you, what's your take on life? What's your outlook on life? Mm-hmm. So, and just in a few words or a few sentences, how would you describe your personal philosophy? Yeah, good question. I've never think about this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll take your time. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I always say that uh, there is no health without mental health. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you want uh, to have uh, successful in your workplace, on your uh, personal life or... Uh, etc uh, you have to have good mental health um, you have to work um, recently you know a lot of advertisements about um, I don't know the fancy bags or shoes I don't know uh, phones and mm-hmm. etc but nobody says about you know I have my personal uh, psychologist or mm. I, I I, I'm proud of this and I don't like stigma around this mm-hmm. uh, if you go and see the psychologist you're crazy and you're, you're, you're I don't know you're, you're weak or mm-hmm. and etc you know and mm-hmm. I, I, I wish uh, after several years uh, it will become uh, more uh, interesting and fancy let's say mm-hmm. and, and healthy norm, normal normal normal, normal yes, thing to, to, to go and see a psychologist yes to talk right. to yeah to get help because i think uh, everyone has uh, difficulties in their life right as you said um the people can come uh, and talk with their friends or teachers or or i don't know to uh, someone else but not psychologists psychologists they're actually uh, really different uh, from the the friends or other star i mean uh, they they it's a science again they learn they they have knowledge they studied 
studied uh, around five years to get diploma <laughs> at mm -hmm. least, right? So, so yeah, it's better to go and see and work with the psychologist rather mm -hmm. than with the with the, with the friends and mm -hmm. get some advice, which probably wouldn't uh, um, help you or it would be maybe not. Uh, uh, maybe it would be even harmful. I don't know, right? So that's why psychologists they, ne they never give uh, advices. They just mm -hmm. <laughs> talk to you, mm -hmm. uh, simple again conversation, and know. And they they you you they just help you to realize what helps to you. Like yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I see. If if you could travel to the past. If you could travel back in time, what what kind of advice would you give your younger self? What kind of advice would you give your 15, 16 year old self? Yeah, um, I think uh, I would say never give up, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, I had a lot of uh, I don't know. It, maybe it was my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it was procrastination. I didn't believe in this, and I had a lot of uh, boundaries in myself. Mm -hmm. So I would say to remove all this mm -hmm. and put away and mm -hmm. go and do mm -hmm. what you planned mm -hmm. and not procrastinate. Right. So you used to be a big procrastinator. Yes. And doubted yourself. You had a lot of fear. Yeah. So you're telling your younger self to be more bold. Yes. Not afraid. Yeah. Go and try things. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool, be bold. Cool. Yes. Good word. Be bold. <laughs> cool, cool. Right now, this podcast is being watched by you, the future you. When we release this podcast, you're going to watch this podcast, I'm guessing. Uh -huh. So what's something you would say to your future self? Oh, because she's see. looking at it right now. <laughs> she's, she's looking at you right now. So, what's something you'd say yeah. to yourself? I like you? your questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> to your future self. Um, to my future self. Because uh -huh. um, this podcast I is gonna go on history. Yeah, it's gonna be on the internet forever. And I'm guessing you're gonna come back and watch this podcast a few times. Mm. So, what's something you would say to that lady? Um. You did a good job, uh -huh. and uh, I'm proud of you. Mm. Uh, um, even uh, even uh, you didn't do some sort of things that you planned to mm. do, for example, it's okay. I mm. mean, uh, it's never late to do this, because mm -hmm. I know that I have this procrastination again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, yeah, um, Believing in you and uh, you did a good job. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling your future self you're proud of her. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. I. That, that's very interesting. That was that was great talking to you today, Miss uh, Mahfouza. It was an interesting conversation. Thank and you. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today and sharing with us all your insights, your experience, and your... Uh, and your stories. Do you have any final comments you want to make before we end this podcast? Uh, I think never, never uh, be shame mm -hmm. uh, to go and see the professional to get professional help mm -hmm. uh, if you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just be yourself. Don't push, don't, I uh, don't know, don't, um, yeah, just be yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, if you guys want to hear more from Ms. Mafuza, we're going to leave her links in the description box below and go and, you know, check her out on social media. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please leave us thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.